Hi, my name is Brett. I live in Pocatello, Idaho. I am 59 years old and I had COVID-19. Uh, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. I run, I go to the gym on a regular basis. Uh, I do small construction projects. I work in the yard. Uh, I travel a lot for my job. Uh, I work for a agribusiness company uh, based out of Idaho. Uh, I feel really healthy. Like I say, I'm active and uh, I was the last person in the world that uh, I thought would get COVID-19. She contracted it from uh, an individual that uh, she was in contact with uh, that had traveled um, to another part of the state. She tested positive and uh, I decided I better get tested. So I went in and got tested. Uh, and that was just the day after she was first showing symptoms and I tested negative uh, the first time. Uh, but of course we knew that I had been exposed at work and, of, and with her too. Uh, and so when I started getting the symptoms pretty bad three days later, uh, I thought, well, I, I think something has changed here. So I went and got tested again. Uh, so that would have been, I guess, five days after she tested positive and uh, I tested positive as well on the second, the second time through. Things started to kind of get out of hand just a little bit, and like I say, they, they seem to complicate one another. I uh, got a sore throat, uh, and it was a nasty sore throat, uh, and then when the stomach uh, part of it kicked in, I usually really have kind of an iron stomach. I think it'd probably been 20 years since I'd thrown up. Uh, but that was not the case with this. It's uh, uh, the stomach part hit me and it lasted probably four to five days uh, and it was really hard to keep anything down including medicine for the um, fever and headache. Another symptom that I got was uh, I started to get fever blisters, especially on my back. I'm guessing probably because that's where I was laying most of the time. When I did go to sleep, I had terrible nightmares. I, I don't know. Um, like I say, that's one that I haven't really heard too much from, from other people, but every time I did fall asleep, I had, had some kind of nasty dreams that made it so you didn't want to go to sleep either. It was a long time before, you know, food started to kind of taste good again, or uh, you'd walk outside and you didn't just smell um, kind of yuck. Um, so yeah, I think that, and then if there was one that lingered on maybe even longer than that, uh, it was the fever blister thing that I talked about. Um, it seemed like it took that quite a while to, to go away. And I just thought, if I do get it, it's not gonna be a big deal, but that wasn't the case. So there are, I mean, two of the, two of the folks that I work with that ended up with COVID, those other two of the three, um, both of them really ended up asymptomatic. Uh, and so, you know, what's the odds? I, I don't know, but I know it wasn't fun. If you get the right person in the right situation, it is a big deal. Uh, and I can certainly see how, uh, you know, older folks or, or folks that have underlying health conditions uh, can have some, some big issues. Uh, and that's certainly possible. Uh, and they don't have to fall in one of those classifications. I don't feel like I fell in, in either one of those classifications, but um, it was still a struggle, and I can easily see how somebody that uh, didn't have good health uh, could, you know, really have a hard time not only getting over it, or if they get over it, use your head and use some common sense uh, and take care of the things you should be, which is wearing a mask when you're around a lot of folks or try to avoid those situations the best you can. And if you can't, you can't. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, same with wearing a mask. Um, have your mask with you, and if you're going to be around a lot of people, um, wear it because there are people out there that could be um, affected other than just yourself. Mm -hmm.